is congruent to that triangle. Uh, we're given that AD, this line here, bisects angle BAC, that's this big angle here, right here, and then we're given that AB is equal or congruent to AC. And the first thing I did is I just mapped, I took this information and I put it onto the triangle. So I've got AB equals AC, so I put one mark in here to show that these two sides are the same, and then I, this bisects, AD bisects this angle, so that I, bisect means it cuts it in half, uh, and that means this angle here is equal to that angle, that means BAD is equal to CAD, and then we've got a shared side, so I put a double mark in there. I'm going to take all of that information and create a proof that these two triangles are congruent by SAS. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the bit of information that I got, which is AB is congruent to AC. It's given, and that would be the first bit of information that I have. The second bit of information I have is that AD bi bisects angle BAC, and I'll probably edit that out. Angle, uh, therefore, angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD, and the last bit of information is the reflexive property uh, with the shared side means that AD over AD equals one, and that means that we have three bits of information that we can use, S, A, S, S, A, S, or if you wanna to go to S, A, S, it's the same thing. All of that comes together to show that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD by S, A, S, side, angle, side, if you have any questions, it would be good to ask them now. I want to point out one other thing, if not, that we can find out that this now, we know this now is 90 degrees. How do we know that? We didn't know before because we weren't sure. But now that we know that this, these two triangles are congruent, then we know that these two angles are the same. And we know that because of something called C. P, C, T, C. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And that means that once you know the triangles are congruent, means that we can conclude that the rest of the uh, parts of the triangle are congruent as well. So in other words, this angle equals that angle. And angle ADC is congruent to angle ADB. And since that's a straight line, then this is going to be 90 degrees. There's only one way that this could work. If this is 180 degrees, then each of those two angles have to be congruent. And the only way they can be separated is 90 degrees with AD being a bisector. Are there any questions on this question? No. Nope. No? Okay. Let's move to the next one. Um, given that PR is, now this is parallel, this P means parallel. Uh, let's look at, how's the camera on this? Can I see that? It's uh, great. Yeah. The lower? Yeah. Okay. All right, so parallel means I'm going to, again, I'm going to look back, I'm going to draw the diagram. Please draw this diagram on yours. Um, PR is parallel to TS. So PR right here, parallel to TS. I'm going to mark it up with those two arrows that show that that line is parallel to that line. And I'm going to do the same with QP and RT. QP and RT, those are parallel. I'll do that with a single line. Uh, we've got two pairs of parallel lines. And then we also have that PR equals TS. So PR, this one here, equals TS. They're not only parallel, but they're equal. Very important. So I've got all the information on the diagram that I can put. Now, what am I going for here? We, we want to find out if that R is the midpoint of QS. So I'm going to work backwards now from the information I'm trying to get. What does it mean for R to be the midpoint of QS? What does it mean about this segment and this segment? For this R to be the midpoint of QS, then this has to be the same as that. And that means what I'm really trying to prove here is if I can prove that QR is equal or congruent to RS, then I will be able to get this thing happening. I'll be able to say that R is the midpoint of QS. Well, in order to get that to be the same as that, we're gonna need these two triangles to be congruent. But right now we've got a problem because at the moment we only have these two sides congruent. Well, how? Do, but we do have parallel lines and parallel lines mean that if I were to extend this out, uh, there's certain angles that are gonna be congruent as well. So. 
this transverse, if this is acting as a transversal, this line here, then what can we say about these two angles? They're corresponding angles, and therefore, corresponding angles are congruent. And now things are starting to take shape a little bit. Um, what would we like to have? We have S, we want to have, uh, we, I don't think we're going to be able to find another line congruent, but we can get another angle congruent. What can we say about, if we have these two lines parallel, then guess what? This also acts as a transversal. And what can we say about these two angles? They are also, right? They are corresponding angles. So suddenly we have A, K, S. Is that a theorem we can use? It is. And now we can prove, therefore, that these two triangles are congruent. And because they're congruent, we can say by C, P, C, T, C, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We can say that Q, R is equal to R, S. Now, all of that has to be written into proof. So it, we're not done yet. And we'll just lift this up a little bit. And you still see that? Yeah. OK, great. So in our proof, We'll use the bubble proof. We're given the easiest thing to put down is that, uh, well, we'll start with the angles. Um, oh, we'll start with PR equals TS. PR equals TS is given, right? And then we're going to get the angles straightened out. We have, uh, because of the parallel lines, you know, PR is parallel to TS. Uh, we can say PR is parallel to TS. That's given. Then we can say that angle uh, PR is TS. So we can say that PRQ, angle PRQ, is congruent to angle TSR, angle TSR. And then over here, similarly, we've got, uh, let's see, these two here. So we're looking at uh, RTQP is parallel to RT, and therefore uh, this one here, P, angle P, Q, R, is congruent to angle T, R, S, and then we put all that information together, and we say that the lines are triangles. Because these two triangles are congruent, triangle uh, P, Q, R is congruent, triangle TRS uh, by AAS, and then we can conclude that QR is congruent to, segment QR is congruent to QRS, uh, that's C, P, C, T, C, congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? Therefore, we can conclude R is the midpoint of QS. All right, that's how it works. Because again, once we've shown that QR is equal to RS, then we have what we need to show that R is the midpoint to QS. Any questions on that? Is that all in there? There we go. R is the midpoint of QS. Yes, questions? Question. When you're saying um, angle like P, R, Q, could you just put angle R? No, it's, conf it's confusing uh, because that could mean a lot of different things. If we say angle R, uh, you know, it's there are too oh, yeah, many things okay. going on there. So you actually have to write it out with the three and say that. Any questions? Any other questions?